In the Tassili cave paintings located in Algeria, you can see the Sahara Desert covered by grass and nomadic shepherd tribes taking care of their livestock. The men have long bodies, long braided hair, and the cows that they cared for were of Zebu origin. The men in the drawings were Pel Uodabi people, like Mama and Hamidou. These are the same men who, even today, continue to undergo the seasonal migration through the Sahel in Niger, or those who emigrate to Europe to earn a living. Only one of Mama's three wives, Haiba, lives with him in Niamey. Haiba is the last and youngest of his wives. He has had three children with her, who also live in Niamey. In spite of the austere and rural aspect of the house, it is situated in the heart of the city center, just about 10 minutes walking distance from the market where Mama has just bought a new tunic. It is the neighborhood where the Uodabi people who have a house in Niamey reside. Here, they reproduce their country lifestyle, but in the city. Look, here I am at the Garibald celebration. That's how we dress for the feast. You'll see. Was this picture taken in Chintabara then? Yes, yes, in Chintabara then. These are my wives. And this is an old picture with one of my brothers. Look, we wear this on our heads during the feast. Let's have some tea. The rest of Mama's family lives in the north of the country, between Tagua and Agadez, in the grass border preceding the desert. During the dry season, they move their camps from well to well, searching for water and fresh grass to feed their animals. When the rains come, if they have been abundant, they move less and life becomes somewhat languid and peaceful. But with or without rain, the work of the women in the camp never stops. According to the Uodabi's distribution of work, Women are responsible for everything that occurs inside the camp, while the men take care of what happens outside the camp. For the women, it's a case of true bad luck, since everything that occurs tends to take place within the campsite. They cook, take care of the children, milk the animals, and cut firewood. Outside the camp, the livestock graze. In this season, livestock graze alone, and so the men dedicate their time to taking care of their physiques. If anything is typical of the Uodabi people, it is their obsession with masculine beauty. During the dry season, when water is scarce and it is necessary to travel far in order to find some, things become balanced. Women do not work less, but the men work a little more. Tamaril is Mama's first wife. They have five children. Their respective parents set up their marriage. The first wife is always an agreement made among families of the same lineage as an aim to keep the family united. Since birth, some girls are already chosen for a cousin or even an uncle by means of a ritual that lasts for years and is not completed until the birth of the first child. Mm. 
Lame is Mama's second wife. They also have five children. Second and third wives are chosen freely and usually for sentimental reasons. Another marriage possibility is one that allows widows, if they wish, to join with their children the family of one of the deceased's brothers. The exchange of cows is the common currency for all these unions. The three options described and the possibility of condemnation on both parts motivate a continuous coming and going of men, women, and cows that finally comes to order with a marriage feast that takes place once the rainy season arrives. Hasi is Mama's niece. She is engaged to Buna, who is one of the most charming boys, or so they say, in the Garawal dance. The feast is about to begin, and during the previous week, the young boys will put on makeup and dance for the girls. Hasi has been lucky. Her union is not an obligation, but a voluntary one. If everything goes right, they will be officially married once the feast is over. Adama is Hasi's grandmother and Mama's mother. She is 67 years old, a very advanced age for Uodabi women who rarely live more than 55 years. She is very happy about her granddaughter's future wedding. <laughs> The bus station of Niamey is the most important place in the city. It is the meeting point for those who come from the desert and those traveling to the south. place to unload merchandise, and where you will find men moving in all directions. Today, the bus stations in Africa fulfill the same functions as the old stations during the time when the caravan still traveled. Mama and Hamidou will go to the north. It is a long journey to the camp of Mama's family. The bus that leaves from Niamey takes 15 hours to reach Tagwa. There, they will take another vehicle until they reach an intersection where an asphalt road appears. From there on, only trucks enter from time to time, carrying merchandise to the village of Chintabaraden. Chintabaraden is the center of the world, at least for hundreds of Uodabi families just like Mama's who live a nomadic life. It is not a large village, but on market days you will see lots of Uodabi people who leave their camps to buy, sell, or just to look around. <laughs> Come on. 